So here's a quick story. I used to run Krunker in my system's RAM, and I did this for about a month just to test it out. And you can actually run any program um, using a software called RamDisk. Um, there's a variety of different programs out there. The best one is called IMDisk. Since RAM is a lot faster than even the fastest SSDs, you can actually get a performance benefit out of this. I definitely got a nice performance boost and some of my past videos were recording um, while I was running the game off RamDisk. The problem though is that you gotta load up the RamDisk every time you start Windows. And um, it does have an added benefit because it keeps the Krunker cache cleared, which is a source of performance problems for a lot of people. In the end, it wasn't worth it for me, and uh, I had some boot up problems that I was trying to troubleshoot, so I went back to using an SSD. If you have a spinning hard drive and you have like one or two gigs of extra RAM on your computer, I actually do recommend um, trying to install a RAM disk, so let me know in the comments if you need help. But as I mentioned, performance, at least for me, is in a good state right now. And the good thing is that the developers constantly add new features, new settings to the game. And they're always trying to optimize for performance on even low-end PCs. So in this video, I'm gonna be highlighting the most important settings that you need to know. And I'm gonna be focusing on new features that came out in 2020. Um, if you are new to the game, I highly recommend that you check out my Crunker Settings Explained video and the follow-up video called uh, Crunker Settings Late 2019. I will try to stray away from calling something the best setting. I know that I've used that term in the past. Um, because I would just rather explain the setting and have you guys decide. And I am using the official Crunker client. I know others have had good success with um, Brave or MTZ. I have tried both of those before, but currently the Crunker client is working out great for me. So first thing you need to do is make sure that unlimited FPS is turned on. Regardless of what uh, FPS that you're using, you should keep this on. And then um, if you slide it to zero, that means the frame cap is non-existent. So that's unlimited frames. Um, you can also slide it to 1200 to cap it there, which is the maximum. So actually these in theory should be the same because recently um, the Crunker team capped Crunker to 1200 FPS and that's a topic for a whole nother video. But um, for me, I'm using 750 because I wanna make sure that I get stable frame rates because I'm often doing things like recording at the same time. So now I'm in the NVIDIA control panel, which I did talk about in a recent video. So I have to update the information because um, for me, the uh, NVIDIA FPS cap is no longer working for Crunker. So it used to work perfectly and with the latest update fixing the frame cap, the NVIDIA one doesn't work anymore. Now, since we're here, I um, should also let you know I am still using a sharpening value of 0 0.06 and I have low latency mode on. It works great for Crunker. Um, other games, it's gonna actually hit your FPS too much. So for example, Call of Duty Warzone and Ultra Mode, so Low Latency Ultra, it introduces too much stuttering and screen tearing. The next setting is Screen Shake, and this one definitely makes a huge difference and is new, so it was released very recently. In fact, before the setting, I didn't even realize that Crunker really had a Screen Shake effect, but it is great that um, we have the option to turn it on or off because some people get um, motion sickness from screen shaking. And if you compare it, again, I'm going back to the Call of Duty example, but if you compare it to COD, COD is just ridiculous with the amount of screen shake. It's way over the top. By default, Crunker's screen shake is relatively mild. And um, that's why I currently leave screen shake on because um, it does give you some feedback, some visual feedback. So maybe I just need to get used to it because turning it off for me was messing up my timing. Um, and if you decide to turn it off, um, you may want to slightly increase your weapon leaning and weapon bobbing setting. So next, we'll go down to the interface section and talk about the scoreboard. So um, when Crunker introduced a new scoreboard, people got really upset about it. Um, so this is, you know, how it was um, typically, and then they made the change, so the scoreboard uh, no longer appeared, and then you would hold um, Tab to see the scoreboard. So I guess it looks a bit cleaner uh, like this, and maybe I should try that more. But I would argue that, um, you know, your field of view is already pretty good. So you're just like losing information by not having that scoreboard always on. So for a competitive advantage, I think using old scoreboard is uh, preferable. Uh, so that's what I would recommend for now. So next I wanna talk about the name tags. Uh, first thing is I do recommend having the name tag health number turned on because it adds information without being too um, intrusive. And then the style. So this one's like, no, none of the options to me are like that good. Uh, I think right now um, everything is getting like kind of cluttered. So you have the clan tag, you know, verified if they're verified, you got the health bar. Um, so there's definitely a lot going on. Uh, the problem is that the other styles 
they don't quite um, give you enough information. So name only, I'll try name only, see? The uh, health bar no longer appears on top of their head, so um, makes visibility a lot worse. And then if we do name and level only, health only, um, you don't see their name. So um, currently it's best to turn everything on. The next new important setting that's now available to you is weapon aim animation, which was added um, like about a month ago or so. Um, so I'll show you what the default looks like is that uh, you can see how the gun kind of disappears when I'm aiming down sights. And by the way, I have hide weapon model on ADS turned on as usual. And then I'm gonna turn off the weapon aim animation setting. So you still get that zoom forward, but you don't have that like fading transparency thing going on. So back to turning it back on. I don't know. I think like if you turn off too many of these things, it just kind of uh, makes the game feel really dead. So that's kind of like my personal rant. Um, I think that Crunker has a lot of potential to look really, really good. Even though it is simple graphics, it's pretty clean. And these small details like the screen shaking and the aim animation, I think adds to it. So I couldn't get used to having the aim animation turned off. Um, so I currently leave it on, but for maximum competitive benefit, um, maybe you turn it uh, off and I think it's gonna come down to preference. The last new 2020 setting that you definitely wanna mess around with is the bullet tracer color, which I think is really cool actually. So this one's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I'll show you how it works. So by default, you can see out of my AR, you can see the yellow bullets, like white-ish yellow. And then I'll change the color, like let's just go like, I don't know, let's try uh, this color, like a magenta. So the good thing about picking a color such as magenta is that it's not really used much in the game, so it really stands out. And um, it'll be a bit easier to see like where bullets are coming from, so you can pinpoint the enemy's location. Like right there is a good example. It was more easy to see the tracers. Um, I'll probably set it back to the default since I think that looks the most realistic, but um, definitely worth messing around with. One setting that I didn't mention earlier is gonna be lag compensation, and it has changed a lot from patch to patch. And I plan on making another video about this sometime and really figuring out exactly what's going on with it. For now, if you have fast internet, you can leave it at zero. And if your internet is laggy and you need to lead shots, you can increase the value until it feels good. And going beyond that, there were plenty of settings that I did not mention that were added to the game in 2020, but um, there's so many changes that I couldn't cover all of them. Some of them related to changes to the map editor. Um, there are like textures on objects, which apply to like some of the new maps, I believe. So not everyone has time to read the patch notes and hopefully this video helped to highlight some changes in 2020, uh, maybe if you didn't play for a while and you're just getting back into Crunker. The good news is that we're getting a ton of patches lately and Crunker continues to uh, grow in popularity. And along with that, um, I'm getting a lot more subscribers. So thank you everyone for subscribing to my channel. And thank you so much for watching this video. By the way, the contest for 10K KR for 10 winners is still open. I drew a total of six winners and we have four prizes left.